Thank you for dropping by. This is Dio, and today we'll be going on an adventure in Black Desert Online. In today's adventure, we're going to be exploring a feature in video that I believe is highly underrated, but deserves more of our attention. Whether we realize it or not, this feature is something that we tend to use on every playthrough of BDO. And the feature that I want to highlight today are the many menus that we have to use in BDO. Let's go ahead and kick things off with the HUD. The horse icon, if you have one out, is going to show your horse's stamina, health, and whether it's a courser or not, depending on the color of the horse emblem. Moving on, we'll go ahead and take a look at the residence icon, which is going to have listed any properties that you've purposed specifically as a residence. You can also use the navigation button in the menu to go ahead and travel to your home if need be. Just keep in mind that you can only have up to five residences at a time. Our next icon is going to be the pets menu, which is going to have listed any and all pets that you've acquired either by a story or from the pearl shop. All pets can be placed into a group but you can only have up to five pets per group. So you can use a group command to take out any of the pets that you need. It's best to have pets placed in groups based upon their skills that you'll see in the top right corner for each pet so that you can get the most use out of your pet groups. Next up, we have the Fairy Maids, and these guys' purpose is to allow you to have remote access to your storage and warehouse if you need these in a pinch. Fairies are limited on the number of transactions that they can do, and their cooldown is about 20 minutes each fairy. So it's best to use fairies wisely. Storage fairies can only access the storage of the nearest city. So for me, because I'm in Calpheon, I can only access a Calpheon storage. While warehouse fairies have full access to warehouse items. You can both transfer and receive items from the storage or the warehouse. Just keep in mind that each action is considered a transaction. A fun fact about fairies is that you are able to have them to be visible within your residence and that limit is up to 17 fairies. For its next icon, we'll briefly touch on tagged characters. You are able to tag up to two characters per account, but they must be within the same city in order for them to be tagged. I'll make a full guide on tagging characters later on. The last icon that we're going to look on at this tray is going to be the personal fairy icon. Now for some reason, this icon tends to be bugged. So the other way that you can access your fairy menu is under functions and you click on fairy and this is going to be the menu that you're going to be brought to. Fairies come in a lot of varieties and they have a lot of abilities. Some are more useful than others, but we're not going to go into detail with that today. I will have a full guide on fairies later on down the road. For the next segment of the video, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the icons that are 
right next to the map with all the tiny symbols in the square. All of these tiny icons are actually navigation buttons. So that if you're in a major city like Calpheon and you need to see some of like the material vendor, you can just go ahead and click on that icon and it's going to set a navigation path to the nearest NPC. Another way that you can also achieve this is by clicking the find NPC icon while you have the map open and you're just going to go ahead and either click on the material icon that's in the list above or you can type in the name and find all the same vendors across the entire map. If for some reason you don't like looking at all those icons at the top, you can go ahead and click the arrow right next to the map to make them disappear and then click them again to bring them out when you need them for the map. We do have a node connector, so that if you're working on a worker empire, you can go ahead and check which nodes will go to what before you're wasting any energy. This icon brings up the settings for navigation on the ocean and on land. Next up, we have the bartering menu, which you're going to be using when you're doing the bartering life skill. And of course, sailing over the ocean. However, we're not going to go into detail into this today. It's a complex system of its own, but definitely deserves an honorable mention here. I will be doing a full guide for bartering in its own video. Next up, we're going to look at the auto navigation presets. These presets will be saved whenever you have certain auto paths that you want to keep using for things like leveling up your horse or other common routes that you tend to take. The way that you create and save an auto path is that you go ahead and set a certain point on the map and you're going to go ahead and choose auto path from there you're going to go ahead and save the auto path in presets 1, 2, or 3. And with that out of the way, we'll go ahead and view the Find Me icon. It's pretty self-explanatory. And with that, we're going to go ahead and move on to the Horse Market. The Horse Market is a fairly deep system. We're not going to go into too much detail today just so that you can register horses into the market at a stable keeper and you can also view horses that other people have listed and if you're looking for a particular horse you can then go ahead and search by tier you can search by skill you can also search by gender there are several costs that are associated with horses the horse market and taxes with the horse market as well but we will go ahead and cover those details in a different video and while we are on the topic of horses we'll go ahead and cover the transport icon transport is when you are transferring inventory from one city to another via a wagon system. When starting out, you're provided with six wagons that you're able to use for transport. You're able to load up to 20 slots of items. There is a weight limit. And you definitely want to make sure that the place you're transferring items to has enough inventory spaces for you to accept the items once they arrive. There are fees associated with storage that is paid by the silver that you have in your storage inventory. 
now that we're done horsing around, let's go ahead and take a look at the next icon, which will open up the Central Market menu. If you're new to the Central Market, or you don't use it a lot, the Central Market is basically where you're going to be spending all the silver that you've been grinding for hours on end. The Central Market does allow you to see the performance of items up to a three month time period so that you can gauge when it's going to be a good time to buy or sell something. If for some reason you don't have a specific item in mind, you can go ahead and do a search on the Central Market based on either the grade of the item so the colors that you see where it's white, green, blue, yellow, red, so on. You can also search items via inventory if you're someone who buys in volume. If you're looking for things like boss gear or armor, you can click in the specific items and they will have different grades all the way from base to pen and even within each grade. If you go ahead and click into the grade that you want, there will be a price range within that grade. Another function that the Central Market does serve is if you're one of those people who just do not want to spend real life money on the game, you can go ahead and purchase pearl items with silver for the most part, but as you can see, there's a lot of other people that have pre-orders in and you better hope your pre-order gets filled within the first couple of days or else you may need to cancel and relist your pre-order and hope that you get lucky. And since we've already brought up pearls, we'll go ahead and take a look at the pearl shop. This is probably the only video that I'm going to dedicate to the Pearl Shop because I do not want to encourage any overspending for people who are either on a budget or do not want to spend too much in the game. But basically, the Pearl Shop is going to contain items like value packs, exchange coupons, pets that are Pearl exclusive like the Hedgehog, and there will be occasions to where you can find items that are being sold for silver instead of pearls within the pearl shop. This is typically only during events and they're usually a once a week item or a one per family item. If for some reason you miss out on some of the silver items in the shop, there is a loyalty section that you can use your loyalty points that you accrue for logging in every day. And that is going to be my brief for the Pearl Shop. Moving on to the more fun items, we're going to go ahead and cover the bottom section, kicking off with the Black Spirit Adventure Board which will pull up the mini game, which is basically free items that you can roll for three times a day. Following up is the Black Spirit Safe, where you're going to pick up your rewards from logging in the adventure. Hovering over to the next spot is the challenge rewards that you get for either daily logins or complete certain challenges in the game. Up next is going to be the mail icon, or if the GMs have an email that they send to the players, they will go ahead and shove it in the mailbox. Be sure to pick up your Draconian event from the mail, by the way, if you are watching during the Draconian Awakening event. We're looking at it now it is going to be the icon that opens up the skill menu. 
So here is where you're going to spend your skill points that you recruit through basically grinding the mobs in the game. And you can go ahead and set your points under either Succession or Awakening, depending on what you've chosen or how far you are in the game. Skills that are available for leveling up are going to be flashing a bright gold color. Some skills can be upgraded by combining two base skills to create a completely new skill that, for the most part, you can either add to your skill bar or use when you feel is necessary. Also keep in mind that some of these skills are more friendly towards PvE or PvP. Skills that have a solid gold border you will be able to add to your quick slots. There are also certain skills that can only be used if you have it equipped in your quick slots. Once you feel like you have everything set up for your character, there are some templates that allow you to save your builds so that you don't have to respec any time you switch from Succession to Awaken. You are able to swap between Succession and Awakening, but only if you have the appropriate items or buffs that are active. I'd recommend the Old Moon buff because it is cheaper and easier to get and sometimes are free. Next on the list is the coupon menu which shows you which coupons you currently have available to use in the pearl shop. If you don't like looking at the extra icons on the bottom of the screen, you are able to reduce some of them just to take some clutter off the screen. And next up, we have the quest menu, which is going to show you your main quest, suggested quest, repeating quest, event quest and these all can also be found under the black spirit when you summon it. The next icon is going to pull up your settings menu. This is where you're basically going to do your system configuration so that you can go ahead and tune the game settings based upon the type of computer that you have and also you can find certain menus that allow you to show or hide either NPC, pets, notifications that will pop up at the top of the screen. And if there are some notifications that you do want to receive, but you don't want it blasting the screen every two seconds, you are able to dedicate certain chat channels to allow for those notifications to go ahead and pop up in the chat instead. A recent update in the game does allow for you to save your settings as a preset and you have two presets that you are able to archive. Just click on the two arrows pointing towards a bracket down in the lower left hand corner if you want to save your setting presets and never have to worry about touching them again. Just to briefly touch on the icons in the HUD that are in the upper left hand corner with your level are going to be your buffs and they will show us active when they are glowing gold and when they are inactive they'll be grayed out and if they are going to expire soon they will be flashing a red and when you first log in a little notification will pop up and let you know that your buff is going to expire soon. Going into the next menu that you're probably going to be spending the most time in 
is going to be your character inventory menu. Here is where you get to basically see your character's inventory. The pearl items that your current character has. You can also see your family inventory and transfer over items between your character's inventory and the family inventory as needed. Over on the left side is where you get to see your character's equipped items along with some tooltip information that'll let you know your current AP, DP, and you also have a few buttons that'll let you mess with your character's appearance. While going through the tooltip, you'll notice that you have a few options that'll give you some extra information on your character that isn't available on the main menu screen. One quick tip about your inventory is that you are able to check on and off auto range, which is actually going to be necessary to combine certain items together in order to make a new item, which is usually done during specific quests. Heading over into our next menu is going to be a more detailed breakdown of your character in terms of its major stats, more tooltip options, as well as your character and family's fame. Fame is normally accrued by increasing your life skills, your contribution points, and also a combination of your entire roster of characters, contribution points, and life skill points. So if you're someone who's an altaholic, you can go ahead and make every character a life skiller, complete all the necessary quests, grind as much contribution as possible to your heart's desire, and maybe one day you'll probably have the highest family fame in the game. So now we're going to go into the menu that should be everyone's favorite and that we spend an ungodly amount of time in, and that is the beauty menu. The beauty menu lets you go ahead take screenshots of your character if you feel like updating their image. You can go ahead and start the hair salon routine by choosing a hairstyle, change the shape of the hair to make it curl, and then of course change the color of the hair once you feel like your hair looks great. That's when you go ahead and move into the most fun menu within the parlor. Basically where you work on your face, facial hair, makeup, face tattoos, and you can even change the structure of your face so that you can make it look as kawaii or ugly as you desire. Please be warned. You can literally spend hours, literal hours, just in this one menu alone, trying to get the perfect look for your character, because you cannot have this level of detail of character creation in any other MMO that's currently on the market. So if you want to roleplay as your favorite fictional character, or you're making an original character and just trying to find the right look for them, be prepared to basically spend a weekend or an off day, whatever time that you have living within this menu. Going back to the character menu, you can find titles that you've earned on your character by either the quest Gaining knowledge, killing bombs, doing certain life skill achievements, and 
certain fishing title. Collecting enough titles is going to give you an increase to both your luck and your stamina once you go through all of the tier. We'll be breezing through the main menu since we've basically gone almost all of the options throughout the video. This is just a quick access to some of the things we've covered. One quick tip is that this game does have a built-in wiki, so if you need help looking for certain items, people, information on locations, you'll go to the wiki without having to leave the game. Another thing to keep in mind is that if you need to contact support for any reason, you are able to do that under the main menu. One thing I did want to review quickly, because it's a new update to a existing function, is the item drop menu that is now renamed the Monster Zone menu. The Monster Zones are basically the nodes where you're going to find mobs and grind them for certain items. You are now able to do a search on locations, mobs, or a specific item, and where they drop. You are able to change and rearrange the icons at the top of the main menu screen. You're just going to go ahead, click on edit, select which icons that you want at the top, and once you're finished arranging everything, you're just going to go ahead and click save before exiting the menu. The last menu that we are going to review today is going to be none other than the Black Spirit itself. The main reason that most people are going to summon the Black Spirit is to accept quests, especially the main quest to progress in the story. There are other functions that the Black Spirit does serve, however, a relatively new function that the Black Spirit has is that you are able to exchange energy in order to gain a combat boost for different durations just to make grinding a bit easier. The second main reason that people will summon the Black Spirit for is enhancing. We won't cover enhancement today because it's a pretty complex system that deserves its own video. Black Spirit is also used for equipping crystals to items that have crystal slots that are available for use. Another function of the Black Spirit is item reformation. So as long as you have an eligible item and the proper upgrade material, it'll give you a higher chance of getting a successful reformed item. This concludes my comprehensive guide to the menus of BDO, and I'll see you guys on the next adventure.